Hi, my name is Thais Gibson, and I'm the creator of the Personal Development School. This is your daily breakthrough video, and in this video, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about boundaries examples for healthy relationships. So this is actually a question I get a lot, like, hey, sometimes you talk about boundaries. Can you tell me about examples of healthy boundaries in relationships? So what I've done for this video is broken down the major different types of boundaries, and then I'm just going to give you some examples. Um, and I have a really in-depth course all about boundaries in general. So you can stay tuned for that if you want to do a deeper dive. There's a link to that um, to try it out for free in the description box below. So um, let's talk about the types of boundaries. So major types of boundaries, we have mental boundaries, emotional boundaries, we have time boundaries, we have material boundaries, we have physical boundaries, and we have sexual boundaries. So mental boundaries are all about like your thoughts, ideas, beliefs, opinions. Emotional boundaries are about your emotions and, and learning to not necessarily take on everybody's feelings around you and learning sort of where you emotionally end and somebody else begins. Then we have time boundaries, which is really about how much time we're giving to people. And does that violate our own boundaries in terms of what we need to do with our time? So for example, if you have a deadline coming up at work and you have to pull an all-nighter and then somebody says, hey, can you help me with my paper too? And you're like, yes, <laughs> you just violated your own time boundary big time because you don't even have, A, you shouldn't have to stay up and pull an all-nighter for work and B, you know, then you're in this position where it's like, okay, and where am I, that's going to hurt your capacity to achieve your deadline. Then we have material boundaries. Um, and this is pretty self-explanatory. This can be your money. This can be your belongings, somebody taking your clothes, somebody taking stuff off your desk in the workplace, whatever it might be, your materials that belong to you. Then we have physical boundaries, which can be our physical space and also our physical body. And then we have sexual boundaries, which is specifically about sex and intimacy. So some really clear examples going through all of this. Number one, an example of a mental boundary would be, um, like actually setting one would be if somebody has a different opinion or belief than you do and they're trying to push you theirs down your throat kind of thing like really trying to say this is the way it needs to be i need you to believe this i need you to get on board i need you to say yes i need you to agree you are at any point allowed to say i appreciate that you're really passionate about this but i don't agree and you're allowed to keep that mental boundary you're also allowed to like nourish and create value or like emphasis or support, like kind of stand behind yourself, I guess would be the best expression in terms of your own opinions. You're allowed to say, this is what I believe in and I'm going to stand behind it. And you're allowed to put that out there, not by pushing it down other people's throats, but by just being really clear in terms of like staying in your truth, living in alignment with what you believe and what you value and what matters to you or what your personal opinions are. Then we have our emotional boundaries. A really clear example of this um, being violated is if somebody emotionally dumps on you. They just say, here, here are all my emotions, deal with them. And that's totally fine if somebody does that from time to time. You know, we all have people who need to vent and do that in relationships, but obviously it's sort of a different situation if this becomes the norm in terms of how you relate to this person. Then you might realize, okay, I'm sort of like constantly being forced to regulate through them and regulate through what they're feeling. Um, and you may have this emotional dumping boundary. And so you might say to somebody, and a good example of a boundary here would be, hey, really value our relationship. But, you know, I notice sometimes you, you sort of give your emotions to me and expect me to fix everything for you. And I want you to be empowered to fix these things in the relationship to yourself as well. So that would be a good example there. Um, a time boundary. And by the way, like the, the, these are very high level examples. Um, the boundaries course that we have goes through all these different types of boundaries in the seven areas of life, helps you do a really intense audit of your boundaries. Then it helps you reprogram your fear around boundary setting because sometimes we have beliefs. Like if I set boundaries with my romantic partner, I'll be abandoned. If I set boundaries with my supervisor, I'll get fired, right? So we have these, these fears about setting boundaries. And then we also have this lack of it being in our subconscious comfort zones. For the, so there's a lot of in-depth tools for reprogramming your fears and then doing exposure work and using other tools to help you be able to set boundaries over time. And there's even some like really specific things you can say and, and scripts in that course. So if this is a struggle for you, check that course out. Literally, there's a link to, to try it out for free in the description box below. Um, anyway, so, and that link gives you access to all of our other courses too, to check it out, seven day free trial. Um, but you can start with the boundaries one if this is what you want to focus on. So 
Then we have the um, time boundary. So a time boundary, just like we talked about, would be like your coworker putting stuff on your plate at the last minute when you don't have time. And it doesn't have to be that like you have to be the person pulling an all-nighter. Maybe you have kids to tend to at home or things that you want to do with your evening and that you need to do to stay in balance, like whatever it might be. And somebody says, hey, do this or can you help me with this? And when we set a boundary, just to be super clear, it doesn't have to be, it's not an absolute. It doesn't have to be a hard yes or a hard no. We can say, look, I have to leave work today at 6.30 p.m. I can't stay any later, but I'm happy to wrap what I'm doing at 6.15 and at least help you for 15 minutes and have a chat. So you can find something that works for you that's a compromise towards the other person that's still you honoring your boundary and your time, willing to contribute and help and be of service where you can. But the clear difference is that it doesn't violate yourself. You're not taking advantage of yourself. You're giving what feels good to give. You're giving from a place of abundance. And there's a big difference between that versus giving from a place of feeling forced, pressured, afraid to say no, afraid to let somebody down. When really what ends up happening is you let the relationship to yourself down instead. Material boundaries. This, uh, an example of setting a material boundary could say, could be if somebody borrows your stuff and you say, Hey, I just want to remind you, you have until Friday to bring that back. And that would be, you may not say it so intensely the first time you may say, Hey, can you, can you return my clothes when you have a chance? But if somebody's not doing that, or if they forgot once, twice, three, you're, you might go and say, Hey, you have until Friday to bring my clothes back. Just wanted to remind you. And you're being like more absolute. And you can see in there with situations like that, we can put deadlines on boundaries as well to sort of push them along a little bit more. A physical boundary, maybe something like not with your physical space, not wanting to move in together right away with somebody or wanting to keep your space the way it is if you do move in with somebody or somebody moves in with you. Um, and that is just a clear conversation about how you would like that to go. Okay. So just saying, Hey, you know what? I'm really enjoying our relationship. I could see a future of moving in together and living with one another, but I'm not there just quite yet really easy. Like boundaries don't have to be difficult. We can set them in really kind ways. A really good example of um, if a really good sign to sort of see if you might be struggling with boundaries is if you think that boundaries have to be an argument. There's sometimes a belief pattern that people carry around there, like a boundary, setting a boundary will be an argument. There, If you say to somebody, I'm not ready to move in yet, but I really like where this is going and I see that in the future, there doesn't have to be anything negative that comes out of that. And it's still you honoring yourself and where you stand. So hopefully you can see that, right? Um, and then a sexual boundary. And this can be communicated um, through your physical body. Like if somebody's trying to kiss you on the first date and you're not sure if you want to kiss somebody yet, you can just keep space, right? And that can be an example of honoring a sexual boundary. Or you could just literally communicate that that's not something that you want to do. So those are some good examples um, in healthy versions of expression and healthy relationships. Hopefully that all makes a lot of sense. If you want to do that deeper dive into boundaries in general, check out the link in the description box below for access for free for seven days. And I hope you enjoyed. Thank you for being here and I'll see you in the next video.